hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21. Let's get right to the point. <laughs> Everybody there? Let's speak it together. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So there's a connection. Does everybody get it? So that means you must be doing his will in this realm. That's what brings the connection to get home. And you're not doing it to get home. You're doing it because you're grateful, you thank, you're thankful, and you love him. And many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not fed those? Have we not given information? Have we not witnessed? Have we not done all of these things? Cast out demons in your name? Done many wonders in your name? Haven't we done all of these wonderful works? That your Bible says to do. And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, he goes to explain about lawlessness. And you must understand that lawlessness is against God's law. Those who refuse to submit to his law laws. Now his laws come by his words, come by what's been written, and come by the spirit. Everything that God says is law. And this is what we got to come to the understanding to. It's law. Now there are spiritual laws and there are physical laws. What goes up must come down. Amen. Verse 24, and he explains, he says, therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Again, the rock is the anointing of God. It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It's the anointing. How do you grab it? How do you stay filled? Gathering. Worship. He says, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not submit to them, does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand, and the sand descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was it fall. So you can try to build the house every time, but it's going to constantly be destroyed. That's where the word says, unless the Lord builds a house, its labor is in vain. So why do people constantly go into cycles? Why do they backslide? Why do they go? They start doing good and then they go drift. You know why? Because there really is no relationship. There's a wannabe, but not a willoughby. It's a head relationship, not a heart. See, in the spirit, it's spirit to spirit. That's what heart is. There's a relationship that you know him, he knows you. That's... and. You know his thoughts. Not that you're going to grab all of them. He's God. You know what pleases him. You know what displeases him. Before you make a decision and choice, you already know what the end result is going to be. See, this is relationship. This is not about an emotional thing. See, people are still having, trying to have a relationship out of an emotion with God. And sometimes he'll back up. And just let you go through your stuff. He wants to know if he can trust you. Everyone earns the trust of God. Everyone earns the favor of God. See, he gives you, provides what you need. But anything after that is earned. Does everybody understand this? It says he provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory. In other words, look, we, all, we don't lack anything. We always have a roof over our head. There's somewhere to eat. There's always something for us. That's for all humanity. 
than the reason people are starving because the devil is stealing. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Lawlessness is a state of disorder due to a disregard of the eternal laws of order. There's a penalty for breaking the law into physical, and there's a penalty for breaking the law into spirit. Again, what is lawlessness? It's a state of disorder due to a disregard of the laws of order, eternal and physical. You run a red light, you usually get a ticket. There's a penalty. Amen? We got to do those stupid courses. God, I know them by heart. <laughs> So everybody understand it. So there is what we call right now we see a spirit of lawlessness or a state of being lawless. It's running the world. It's infiltrating every area. It's infiltrating the body of Christ. People have gone from relationship to religion. They have gone from boldness and trust in God to fear and cowering. God is raising up an army. And he's been raising up an army. Listen, there'll be casualties in the, in the army, amen? But don't bring a self-afflicted casualty, amen? It's like somebody shooting themselves in the foot. Instead of because they missed, they can't see the enemy. Matthew 13. of lawlessness. It's a state of disorder due to disregard to laws. Matthew 13 and verse 37. Hallelujah. And then Jesus answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of God, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom. Whose kingdom? His. All things that offend and those who practice what? Lawlessness. This is his kingdom. This is his body. He says, I'm going to go through the whole body and everyone that's practicing lawlessness, I will pull out. And they will cast them into the fire, furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteousness shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. My goodness, if this was just preached every single day, there would be a change in this body. Because, see, people have lost the fear of God. They've lost the reverence. They become complacent by the news, by all of the other things that's going on, and fearful misled they become lazy no longer fighting the way they should not first strikers amen they've lost the touch of reality true reality see this is not true reality this is temporary The tares are rebellious to the laws of God. They practice lawlessness and don't believe or follow. They're not willing to submit to the law of the Creator, and they are not able to resist the influence of the wicked ones because they're not submissive. Amen? That's called lawlessness. Matthew 23. There is a tremendous spirit that's bringing people into a state of lawlessness. 
And we must combat this spirit. Verse 25. Matthew 23, 25. Everybody okay? Everybody there? Let's speak it. Woe. Woe means without eternity. To you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? Somebody who practices lawlessness. Amen. They're rebellious, aren't they? For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Extortion and self-indulgence are promoters of self. He said, blind Pharisees first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you are like the whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful on the outside, but inward are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so you already outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Why? What is lawlessness? It's a state of disorder due to the disregard of the laws of God. Is everybody okay? Lawlessness will abound. So he talks about self-indulgence, outward appearance of beauty, false righteousness, but they're hypocrites. They're called two-faced. They're rebellious and they're practices of lawlessness. Matthew 24. Are we seeing that happen globally? Yes. We see that happen in the body of Christ. You know why people are really not sold out? They try to make you think they're sold out, but they're really not. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3, Matthew 24, 3. Let's speak it. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us. When will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and one will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, which we see are increasing. And these are the beginning of sorrows. How many people? There, there's a lot of people that are sorrowing today. Amen. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. They will attempt to kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because of what? Lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. So you've got to understand lawlessness is going to increase and the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be what? Shall be saved. Lawlessness will abound, increase. False humility, forms of godliness Denying its power and no power to overcome the law of death. Because to practice lawlessness is a result of death. The end result is death. Why? The wages of sin is what? Death. See, people aren't seeing this all the way through. Because they're caught up in themselves and can't see beyond that. Romans 6. Hallelujah. Let's start at 12. Yeah, let's start at 11. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to what? Sin. But alive to God in what? Christ Jesus our Lord. So you can try to, try to make yourself believe that you're dead to sin, but if you are still lawless, practicing lawlessness, you're not dead to sin. 
But nothing can happen without the presence of God. Unless you're not one that presses in, it's very difficult. Amen? You can read the Word all day long and get head knowledge. You can be directed on what to do, but still can't do it. Even Jesus said, you seek the Scriptures thinking you have eternal life, but you won't come to me to get it. He warned them, without my presence, you're nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Verse, 13, uh, verse 12 again. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its what? Lust, living under Satan's torment. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you unless you practice lawlessness. For you're not under the law of sin and death, but you're under a grace. Grace is a law in itself. What is grace? It's God's plan to escape. <laughs> so if you're not participating in the plan of escape, you're in lawlessness. Is everybody all right? Oh, praise God. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know to whom you present your sla yourselves slaves to you to obey? You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the what? From the what? Not the mind. You obeyed from the what? Heart relationship. Not from the mind. That form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and now having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members of slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free for, in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lawlessness or righteousness. One leads to death, one leads to life. Amen? What you submit to or agree in your thoughts, you become. As a man thinks, so he is. Listen, thoughts are spiritual substance. Everyone say they're spiritual substance. Thoughts are spiritual substance. See, people that just think that their thoughts, oh, nobody's going to see nothing. I mean, it's gonna, no, they're a spiritual substance. What you're thinking is moving. What you're thinking is moving. And what the enemy wants to do is get you to think so he can move in this realm. So as soon as you speak it, don't raise your hand. Anybody ever grumble and complain? Don't raise your hand. Amen. You said something you shouldn't have said. Well, you just moved. What you speak, those words do not fall to the ground. They are picked up from the demonic forces or angels. They're either working against you, and they're waiting for you to step right into it. Or they're working for you for victory. One or the other. See, that's what the powers of darkness do. They get all of the lying media to bring fear, and people talk about fear. Now you got fear all over the place. Look, at fear is a promoter of lawlessness. Amen. What is it coming against? God. What God says. That's what fear does. It comes against what God says. Why? He's, the Lord told us he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Those are thoughts that are from the future, pleasing to God and what he says. And as we are released those thoughts into the atmosphere, things are changing. And they're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. Those thoughts. Words that you speak 
are not just pushed aside. They're not floating in a the river. They're waiting for you. Every word that is spoken out of your mouth is waiting for you to reach it. Is everybody all right? Oh, happy days. So thoughts, either going to promote words of life or words of death. Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6. Seven. Is everybody there? Galatians 6, 7. Oh, hallelujah. Do not be what? Do not be what? Satan's greatest weapon is deception. His power is what? Fear. It's real simple. If you're fighting for your life, you're in fear. If you're surrendering to life, you're rejoicing. Everyone must understand when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you gave your life away. You no longer have one. It's his life, not yours. Amen? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, he's going to reap. And whatever he speaks, he's going to eat. For he who sows to the, his flesh will reap, what? Of the flesh, corruption. Corruption is a curse. It's a what? Curse. That's how corruption comes. Nothing, the enemy cannot move on you unless there's a curse there. And bring, people bring self-imposed curses all the time. Things they say, things they agree with, things they do. They're calling forth the curses on their own life, even after they've been saved. Amen? Is lawlessness bringing a curse? Actually, it's actually a fruit of it. But he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart. That means you've got to be consistent. This is a law of sowing and reaping. It's a law of sin and death, or a law of righteousness in life. He's given it to me and you to abound to. And Matthew chapter 6. Uh, Matthew 5, I'm sorry, verse 6. Remember, anything that God speaks is law. Matthew 5, verse 6. Is everybody there? Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Well, then cursed means those are hunger and thirst for lawlessness. For they shall be filled with the Spirit of God. Listen, you hunger and thirst for righteousness. That means everything that you look at, you discern because of whether it's righteous and justice or it's not. Everything. But to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness means you're hungry and thirsty for His presence. Because His presence is what releases righteousness. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you can't obey without the strength of His presence. And obedience is a fruit of righteousness. So in this, that's why he says, don't forsake to assemble. I'm going to probably preach this till I die. Or no, get raptured. I die daily. 
It's amazing to me how many people don't love God's presence enough. They don't, they're not in love with his presence enough. They're not really seeking his presence. They come ritualistically, religiously, for a self-feeling that I went to church. I'm bad. You are bad because you came to church and didn't connect. Oh, happy days. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for his righteousness, and they're going to get filled. Thirst and hunger for righteousness are filled with the Holy Spirit that brings righteousness of God. Galatians 5. Oh, glory. Snap. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. I say that walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh is the desire to practice lawlessness. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you don't do the things that you wish or desire in the flesh. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh, now remember, flesh is a promoter of lawlessness, are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which means drugs, alcohol, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, Revivals and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not enter eternal life or the kingdom of God. Works of the flesh is death. It's that simple. Amen? First Samuel 15. And that's a state of lawlessness. It's because of influenced by the spirit of lawlessness. 1 Samuel 15. How many of y'all know we've been called to bring, be priests and kings? That's a position to be fulfilled. Don't look in the mirror and determine that, believe me. It's God that determines that. That's what he says. We've been called to be a priest and a king. A king is a third place and position in the chamber of the tabernacle of God. It's one with authority. A priest is one who ministers to the Lord. If you can't minister to the Lord, hello, can you be a king? No. Can you be a warrior? No. And if you can't minister to the Lord, you've got no right minister to nobody else. Verse 22. So Samuel the prophet said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, which is the law? Behold, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. And to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. That means lawlessness is being promoted by wickedness. Because you have rejected the law, the word of the Lord, he will reject you for being king. Wow. That's a place and position. That means that person will not make that position. He won't have authority. He won't have dominion. When you submit to dominion, you receive it. Does everybody understand that? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rebellion and stubbornness is lawlessness influenced by sin, which is known as the presence of evil or your flesh. 
These things bring a curse. They bring a what? Curse and move you out of God's timing. You miss an opportunities of escape and blessings, and you're missing freedom. Now, we're going to go further into this because the Lord has been revealing to so many things. I mean, I was downloaded, and I can't exp I'd have to write a book on it. But we're going to a place in this next few days, and this is just foundation. We're going to another level. 2 Corinthians 6. I don't want to miss what Dad's trying to do with his people. Verse 14. You know, when you read the Bible, you begin to see all the lawlessness and, and so forth, you know, and the unrighteousness. And, and in other words, he's always expressing both of them. He's always trying to tell us, do you want life or do you want that? Do you, want, do you want to choose life or do you choose death? you want to live forever with him or apart from him? Verse 14, don't be unevenly yoked with, together with what? Unbelievers. Hello, why? Is an unbeliever righteous or lawlessness? Lawlessness. Remember, associations bring impartations. Who you associate with. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? There you are. And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? And what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement of thoughts has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people if they do what? Be sanctified. Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Don't associate. Don't be entangled with this lawlessness. Don't promote lawlessness. See it through. And don't touch and agree with those things that are unclean, physically and spiritually. Then I'll receive you. Then I'll receive you. Why? Because God does not associate with lawlessness. He does not associate with sin. Everything that approaches him better be under the blood. Everything. That means there's repentance, humility, and turning of the wicked way. In verse 18, then he says, I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now that's a place and position of such relationship. Where there's a love affair. Again, you're not doing things to gain favors or points. Amen? You're doing it because you love them. And you know that this place isn't your home. It's just temporary. We're just cruising through here. Amen? I can't wait to get home. But I know we have a job to do. I want to bring as many people home as possible because that's where we came from. That's why we're to be lovers of his presence because that's where we came from. But the enemy comes in and blinds, deceives, manipulates, brings Heart, hearts, rebellion, lawlessness. The moment you think you're okay, you're in trouble. I'm all right. Yeah, you're all right, all right. Somebody says you, they're all right, step back. There's usually a truck coming or something, I don't know. <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> don't get caught up with somebody that says they're all right. <laughs> I'm all right. Oh, man. Run! <laughs> Have no fellowship with lawlessness. Don't touch an agreement of rebellion, which is thoughts or words of spiritual. Remember, your words, your thoughts, your thoughts are spiritual, tangible. They're substance. The spirit realm grabs your thoughts if you let them. They grab your words and they grab your thoughts. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 2. And 
I'm going to say thoughts are spiritual substance. Second Thess, chapter 2. That's why the word says, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. In verse 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's speak it. Do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, we've talked about this, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness, in other words, what's behind this lawlessness, which is already at work, only he, God, the body of Christ, who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. So remember, once we are removed from the earth, <laughs> lawlessness will no longer be restrained. It's going to invade everyone. This place is going to be Sodom and Gomorrah and crazy. The world is going to be so corrupted. And those who are going to be left behind they will be fighting for their lives. They'll either take the mark or they'll be headed or hide out and starve to death or some of them, God willing, will turn many to righteousness and light and get rescued at the end and make it. Believe me, when the rapture comes, a lot of people are going to get saved. Because of that sign. It's the ultimate sign. See, the first ultimate sign was the resurrection of Jesus. The second ultimate sign will be the rapture, the removal. Both of them are resurrection events. Amen? It says in verse 8, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord eventually will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with his brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one that promotes lawlessness is according to the working of who? Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved or they don't lose. Listen, truth is not just words. It's a person. His name is Jesus. That's why he's called the way, the truth, and the life. So they did not love his presence. They weren't thirsty and hungry for his presence, for his righteousness. They were not able to press in. Remember, the word tells us about foolish virgins and wise virgins. Amen? Even though that they were saved, many sold their souls. Because they began to promote and cooperate with lawlessness. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they may believe in the lie and that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, which is also lawlessness. Does everybody see that? Everybody okay? Again, the mystery of lawlessness is influence. It's rebellion. Those who practice lawlessness is influenced by Satan's kingdom, his angels, demons, and possessed humans. Not willing that to be thirsty and hungry or go deep with God, but doing only the minimum to get by. Again, they do the minimum just to get by. God knows. Amen? Because just doing the minimum to get by is destructive. Instead of restraining evil, evil is now restraining them. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 4. Let's speak it. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. 
Remember what is lawlessness? It's a state of disorder due to the disregard to the laws of God. Hmm. Let's go a little further. Amen. In verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. Is everybody there? And in him there is what? There's no sin. In him there's no sin. Whoever abides in him doesn't sin. That's it. Here's the key. If you're abiding in his presence, sin doesn't have dominion over you. You're not influenced anymore. Even though it comes, it can't penetrate. You know it's coming. You see it. You can sense it. But before it can get to you, it's dissolved because it melts in the presence of the Lord. Whoever abides in him doesn't sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him or been out of, taken out of position. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. Again, here we go. It's a state of being born again is a position of the heart, mind, will, and desires that align themselves with the character of Christ. Once that alignment is broke, that state of born again is out of position. I'm going to say this again. The state of being born again is a position of the heart, the mind, the will, and the desires. The heart, the mind, the will, and the desires. The heart, the mind, the will, and the desires. Oh, my. That align themselves with the character of Christ. They are living, living a new life from the future that hates evil, lawlessness, rebellion. But they thirst and hunger and love righteousness. In the presence of God. There's something that they know. This earth is not their home. So they're not fighting for this place anymore. They're fighting to bring heaven into this place. Again, many of these things cause a break in time. Like I said, I'm not going to get into all of this today. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2 and verse 21. Second Timothy 2, verse 21. Is everybody there? Anybody there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good to hear the pages turning on the Sunday morning. Glory. In verse 21, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from his passes later, his old life, his old ways, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work or every call what God has. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses, having been taken captive that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been keep taken captive by, by him to do his will. Again, what he's saying is repent, turn, break out. 
See, when people are in a, a place of lawlessness, they're in another time. They're not, in, they're not in God's time. So what has to happen, they must break out of that time. It's a break out of that time. It takes repentance and turning and deliverance to break out of that time. Many people lose their deliverance and go right back into that time again because of things they say, agree, or touch. Not even realizing that they've just gone back into time. So you can catch yourself quick. Uh-oh. Man, see, you should know if you're in time or out of time. You know it. Amen? Because even when the roads are rough, you're running smooth. Even when you're going through stuff, you're still running smooth. You still know. Your words are staying steadfast. And if they're not, you shut up. Amen? And you wait to get reconnected. So you repent, you turn, you break out of the timing of lawlessness into God's time of righteousness. First John chapter 2, and then one more scripture. Spirit of lawlessness or state of, brings a state of being lawlessness, moves a person out of the state of being born again. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If the love of the Father is not in him, that person is in lawlessness and fear. And he loves the world. That means he loves himself. Because, see, self is of the world. When you put yourself first, you're of the world. If you can't deny yourself, you're of the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and not of the Father, but is of the world. That means you're under the Father of hell. The rebellious one, the liar, the deceiver, the murderer. We are now under his authority and his time and out of God's time. But people don't see this. They can't comprehend us because they're blinded. And the world is passing away in all the loss of it. But he who does the will of God, he who does the will of God abides forever because they're in God's time, not in their own. Little children, it's the last hour and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Why? Because they got captured in the enemy's time, lawlessness. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. They would have stayed and fall all the way through. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know this. You know this. You know all things. Many not able to say goodbye to the old ways in the world. But they're saying, okay, to the ways of lawlessness. And I'm going to close at Hebrews 10. Praise God. Hebrew 10. God is always making a way of escape. Always. Amen? He's always. But how many times do we escape but not grow? So finally, there's no more escape. Verse 19. 
Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, and by a new and living way, which he consecrated for me and you, through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true, true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, <laughs> and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. And he explains why. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Why? You gather together, you're stirring up what? Well, love, good works. You're connecting to the presence of God. You're destroying and dismantling all areas of lawlessness if you're pressing in and connecting. Again, you can come to services and never connect. And, you know, it's not about services. Amen? I don't really like that word. We gather to get into God's presence. <laughs> we come to get reconnected and to express our love to Him. He said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in a manner of some, but extorting one, ex, exhorting one another. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's how we do a Holy Ghost stick up, right? <laughs> but ex exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What's he saying? Get in the, keep assembling. Do it more. Do it more. Do it more. Why? The day's approaching. We're close. It's happening. It's around the corner. Wickedness is all over the place. Lawlessness is promoting itself. Many have fallen them back, fallen into this place. They're no longer producing fruits of righteousness. They're all caught up about themselves. He says here, verse 26, because he said this is what's coming. Come on, read it with me. For if we sin, what? willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. So if you die in that condition, you're going to hell. But I've been a believer in 25 years. Bummer. Believing means to follow. Not saying you believe. You're going to get before God and say, I believe. He's going to open the book of remembrance. Let's see if you really believed. Depart from me. I don't know you. For anyone willfully sins after he has received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he who be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord is the judge of his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. This is reality. It's just not expressed enough. The fear of God just doesn't seem manifested enough in the body of Christ. And people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge, not walking in God's presence, thinking that they're good. Good don't rescue you. There's still that same saying, even though they talk about who in the world, being connected you know somebody. Amen? <laughs> we only need to know one person. His name is Jesus. And his presence. Amen? And he's left his spirit for me and you to connect us all the time and guide us and lead us. What did he just say? It's a shameful thing. Shameful. To trample the blood. 
to disregard the spirit of the living God, to walk away. People are walking away, doing their own thing, thinking they're okay. Not knowing they just brought a curse on themselves. Listen, the enemy doesn't attack you the day you get the curse. He waits. He waits and waits and waits and waits. The prime opportunity where he can cause you to fall and affect more people. Amen? We've got to be wise. We've got to know these things. We've got to be able to discern, stay filled, dressed, and possessed with the presence of God. We must maintain a thirst and hunger for his righteousness in his presence. If it begins to diminish or compromise, you should be sensitive enough to these things and say, you know what, I can't go there. Stop chasing money and start chasing the Lord. Stop chasing the world and start chasing the Lord. Stop chasing the opposite sex and start chasing the Lord. <laughs>